Dr. Schickman is board certified in internal medicine and rheumatology. He is a leading author of numerous scientific publications in peer reviewed journals, including the Journal of Immunology, Arthritis, and Rheumatism, Annals of Rheumatic Diseases, New England Journal of Medicine, and Nature Biology, among others. Dr. Schickman received his MD cum laude from the Russian State Medical University, a preeminent Russian medical center. After graduating from med school, he spent five years in basic research and clinical research in the area of autoimmune immune diseases driven by infectious agents and received his PhD in immunology from the Moscow Medical Academy. In 1990, he immigrated to the United States and became a research professor at Oklahoma University Health Sciences Center in Oklahoma City. He served his internship and residency in internal medicine at Oklahoma University Health Sciences Center and completed his clinical fellowship in rheumatology at Scripps Clinic. Subsequently, he became a member of Scripps Clinic Division of Rheumatology and a faculty member of the Department of Arthritis Research at the Scripps Research, Research Institute. Uh, he is listed in Who's Who in American Medicine, America's Top Physicians by Consumers Research Council of America. His other awards include a research grant from the Oklahoma Center of the Advancement of Science and Technology, uh, an Oklahoma University Award of Clinical Excellence, and a Skaggs scholarship in biomedical research. Um, he was just explaining to me, though, that he is no longer part of Scripps Clinic. He's now an independent physician, and uh, with obviously uh, rights at Scripps Encinitas. And we're very pleased and privileged. This is a topic we've never had before. Uh, we've been doing this for about four years, and based on the, the crowd turnout tonight, it's obviously something that people want to hear about. So I'm very pleased and honored to present to you Dr. Schiffman. diseases and before we start I would like to find out how many of you are gluten intolerant. Please raise your hand. So quite a few. Right. It's very impressive. So uh, we'll talk about gluten and rheumatic diseases and at some point maybe it'll be a bit more technical. So if you have questions about technical aspects you can ask me and maybe at the end. All right. So uh, a lot of patients ask me how you came up with the idea about gluten and autoimmune diseases. And uh, in order to make an introduction, I would like to discuss one case, which is kind of a typical case, what we see in our clinic. So uh, this is a, a real case. Uh, it's a 42-year-old woman who came to our clinic uh, several years ago. Sorry about that. Uh, she came to us in order to get a second opinion uh, regarding the nature and management of her symptoms. Uh, so she told me that uh, she developed pain in her muscle and joints around 20 years ago when she was in her 20s. And uh, this coincided with her onset of endometriosis, which is kind of not very pleasant condition affecting women. Uh, she was uh, in extreme pain and she was referred to pain management uh, physician who diagnosed her with fibromyalgia. Uh, she was studied on antidepressants. Almost instantly, uh, and uh, she developed severe dryness in her eyes. Sorry about the noise. And she developed se uh, severe dryness in her mouth, so she couldn't tolerate antidepressants, so she stopped them. Uh, then she decided to see uh, another physician, so she ended up in a rheumatology office and uh, was diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis, uh, which is a chronic condition affecting spine and peripheral joints. Uh, she was started on entire family therapy and subsequently was started on very strong drugs called Remicade. Uh, she didn't do well on Remicade uh, and actually started having chronic sinus infections. So at that point she decided that enough is enough and so she stopped the drug. And that's how I met her. Uh, so when she came to our office, like this, can you hear me? So uh, when she came to our office, uh, her main complaints included muscle pain, like 10 on a scale of 10. She was extremely fatigued. Uh, she got uh, profound morning stiffness, which lasted around a hour, couple of hours. She has profound mucosal dryness affecting her eye, mouth, and 
vaginal area. She also was diagnosed with osteoporosis, which was resistant to uh, by, by bisphosphonates, and she couldn't tolerate the drugs, so she stole them, and she was taking calcium at the time of the presentation. Uh, she also was complaining of frequent headaches, and also uh, she had so-called irritable bowel syndrome. She had mainly constipation, which were kind of debilitating, and extreme bloating. That's how she presented to our clinic. And again, this is a typical case. We have many, many uh, patients who present exactly the same picture. So her family history uh, was important for history of osteoporosis, uh, evil bowel syndrome, Sjogren's syndrome, which is autoimmune disease affecting eyes, mouth, and uh, genital areas, and also low thyroid function. Uh, we did physical exam, and her physical exam was basically important for uh, skin rash over shoulders, uh, dryness in your eye and mouth, mild tenderness throughout the abdominal area, and extreme muscle tenderness. Uh, uh, we did quite a few different lab tests, and she was found to be anemic uh, and iron deficient. She had low level of vitamin D, and uh, we screened her for genes associated with gluten tolerance and celiac disease, and one of the genes came back positive. Uh, she requested endoscopy because she wanted to be sure that she does have celiac disease, and endoscopy came back negative. So the gastroenterologist who saw her told her, you don't have any problems with gluten, you can ignore it, that's not true. So she came to me crying, you know what to do, and we had a long conversation, and I told her, listen, there's nothing to lose. Uh, try gluten free diet for a couple of months, and then you tell me how it feels. So eventually, uh, I convinced her to go on gluten free diet, and she also started iron and vitamin D supplementation, because she was anemic and she was very vitamin D depleted. So one month after initiation of uh, gluten free diet, her pain subsided by 40-50% without any drugs. Uh, in three months, she became completely pain-free. Uh, what is interesting that you know she challenged herself, and consumption of gluten resulted in transient and near complete reproduction of her pain. She was in extreme pain within 24 hours after she consumed gluten. So it was a challenge test, and she decided that you know she's not, not going to do it again. And uh, six months after she started the diet, she started having more and more. She noticed more and more production of saliva uh, and tears, and uh, I saw her recently, it's been around two years after her initial presentation, uh, she's still pain-free and her dryness almost completely resolved. So again, this is a typical case which we see in our practice, and it brings up an issue of how our gut are connected to the whole immune system and how gut is involved in rheumatic and autoimmune diseases. So one thing which we need to remember is that our gastrointestinal system is the main entry for foreign materials in the form of food, right? We eat several times a day and all the materials which we consume, they're foreign to our body. And uh, they feed not only our body, they feed bacteria which lives in our gut, right? And all this enormous amount of food and microorganisms, they affect uh, our immune system. So I, I want to just show you a couple of interesting numbers, for example, if we unfold our dry tract, the actual area of the dry tract is equal to 2,700 square feet. It's the size of tennis court. That's the absorptive area of our gut. Right? Uh, compared to that, the area of our skin is around 17 square feet. So basically, you can see the difference. And so that's why gut is the main immune organ in our system. That's the main kitchen where our immune system is trained. And if something goes wrong, we're paying for that. So uh, again, uh, food and microbial products are the main stimulants of our immune system, and they're basically main external regulators of various metabolic processes in our body. And what we eat obviously affects our immune response, it affects various inflammatory processes, and if something goes wrong, it can result in autoimmune and rheumatic diseases.